slammed you, he didn't bump you, he didn't nudge you, he rubbed you. And Robin's son is racing. And welcome everybody to Locked On iRacing, the interview section of the podcast. I am Peter Wilco Wilkinson and I'm joined by Braden Martin. How are you going, mate? No, won't ask that question. We'll move on from that. Because we've got a <laughs> I don't want to know the answer, and we've got a very, very special guest. We have Stuart Brown, the man uh, behind FGM Ecast. How are you going? Good guys, yeah, very good. It's been too long. It's been way too long. How how are you today? Yeah, look, um uh, another day um during the uh, this COVID period that we're going through here, but uh, no, look, it's Friday night, so there's a, a clear weekend ahead for uh, jumping on, doing some iRacing and uh, no broadcasting as well. So all good. All good. All is happening. That's the main thing, mate. So we're going to quickly, I'm just going to quickly shout out to a couple of sponsors and then we're going to get into the thing because I keep on forgetting to do it until right at the end and they're paying money, so I better look after them. <laughs> uh, so let's look after Go check out Brewster Coffee, so Brewster.coffee, which is B-R-E-W-S-T-R. Uh, it's a little Ashley Knowles is helping us out with that one. Uh, great, great place to find coffee all around the, of the world and uh, also rate if you've got one in your local area. Uh, also, 24-7 Race Control has jumped on board as well, so check them out. They're really cool. 24-7 Race Control on Facebook. we help them out. And we've got the last one is CD Simtography, which is Clayton Davis' Simtography uh, photo- photography work. He does dirt, but he's also branching out into road stuff. Go check him out on Facebook, CD Simtography. But Stuart, enough of that, mate. What What is, who is Stuart Brown, I should ask? Um, oh, a, a very complex question, mate. How long does the it podcast is. go for? How long does it go? Uh, no, as long but... as it takes, mate. We've got at least five minutes with you. Oh, no, we'll go. Start from um, the beginning, mate. Stuart Brown was a boy. Yeah, absolutely, mate. No, look, I'm a ga- gamer from childhood. I'm in the in the right zone to you know remember when the Nintendo was released and um, you know had three eight six and four eight six computers and all that back Whoa. in the day. So going going back way when they back, had megabyte hard drives. That's it, mate. When it was huge, when you had more than one meg and you you know you're able to run <laughs> run stuff that came on two or three discs. So um, you know been been gaming since I was a kid and um, got into iRacing um, around about eight years ago. Um, the timing of it was perfect. I bought a sim rig just before my first son was born, thinking that I'll have tons of time to uh, oh, yeah. get into that. <laughs> and, um, and he's it, only just touched it. <laughs> it well, it, it, it got sold. It got sold because I didn't oh, use no. it. So I um I got in and then got out, and we you know moving house and stuff like that had no internet connection as well, which made it terribly difficult to jump on iRacing. But um, I've heard that know, does make it hard. Yeah, it does make it difficult. But you know, talk of touring and all that sort of stuff back in back in the day. Accolade Formula One was probably the earliest game I remember, wow. other than the the old steering wheel um with the with the light behind it that you used to play when we were a little kid. <laughs> yep. So all that sort of stuff, and then you know come back around to um actually I got in got back into it in um in 2019 so just missed that covid sort of inflation bubble that happened early 2020 yep. and a couple of guys that i raced with uh in real life said oh we're starting the league and stuff to replace the season and they all got into it and i got right back into it um and then they said oh we don't we don't have anyone to broadcast and i said oh well you know i'll, I'll have a crack I'll give it a go <laughs> can't be um, that hard really well, no, I can't just, I'm good at talking. So I just figured that it would just be a natural fit. So, um, and then just got stuck into it and I've been doing it ever since. Was lucky enough to have um, Chris Purnell, who I know has been on the, the podcast before. I got introduced to him through the series that, that was set up. He jumped on with the uh, the sports sedan series at the time that was running, that we were, we were running in and got talking with him and, you know, just uh, it all sort of spurned from there. Introduced me to Ed Foster, of course, who uh, you've had on here as well. Yes. So, um, <laughs> of, of Ant's car fame, and um, yeah, we just kept going with it from there. So, it sort of turned into into a, a, not a business because we you know we don't make any money out of it. We we we, we do it out of the kindness of our hearts. But um, it, it certainly turned into you know another portion of our business outside of this. I do. Um, I run a media agency and a couple of retail businesses as well. So it, it sort of fits with what we were doing and, and everyone at the company is really interested in esports as a whole in, in, in their varied ways. So, you know, it gives us that little passion project on the side to keep involved with as well. And and that brings me, uh, it gives you the quick synopsis of where we're up to today. That's great. That's why I love that question. There is I've so much to unpack right there. Um, <laughs> this is going to, yeah, we get multiple podcasts out of this. So let's start with, the, the little throwaway comment you put in there, real life racing, the people you race with in real life, explain that a little bit for me. 
Yeah, look, it gets difficult when I say stuff like that. There's no there's no framework <laughs> for expressing the difference between an esport and a real life sport at the moment. So I, yep. those offended, I apologise. Those who understand, <laughs> thanks very much for, uh, for for doing so. But um, uh, I got into got into car racing uh, proper when um, I was old enough to afford to build my own car. So I'm a qualified mechanic as well by trade. Um, wow. Okay. And yep. and um, yeah, I uh, built a Tirana. Uh, Dad and I wrote both raced Tiranas in the Historics. We started that when we, we moved back from overseas um, in early 2000, and um, still have the Tirana today, um, a Commodore Cup car as well that we run in improved production. So we've we've sort of been racing for about 15 years, um, and yeah, so just some of the people that I met through that. But um, that's that's been. A, a, a long-standing and um, painful hobby. It uh, takes up just about as much time as sim racing. Um, yep. So you know, there's and no a little there's bit more money too. I, I probably assume. more money. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, yeah, you spend more at the front end, and there's not as much risk of stacking and, and costing yourself a bomb on the other end. So, and and I've got a, a pretty young family. I've got a, an eight and a six-year-old, so they take up plenty of time in car racing. Real uh, life is 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 very much on the back burner, but uh, sim racing I can fit in. Because the prep time is uh, just not as not as bad when you can jump in and you know do the fixed Ferrari series or something like that to keep your hand in it. Um, it, it makes it a little more convenient. So you could definitely fall in the camp uh, that RFL Berg oh, says. Anyone who complains about um, the cost of sim racing doesn't understand what real racing's like. Then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, real racing's a time bomb to when you blow up your bank account. Um, sim racing's <laughs> not quite so bad. That's right. Um, yeah. Go for it. I was going to say, what what have been your favourite memories from being out there racing on the track? Have you had any just great battles or races that you've really enjoyed? Well, being in a Tirana in the Historics is like turning up to a race event with one of your legs missing, because <laughs> it's 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 all in the Historics. It's all about bustling V8, you know. And and the the advantage that the V8 guys have is they're able to use a little bit of newer technology. It's not quite um, what we the Bianti series. It's not quite that that um that at that level. Um, but the you know the Tirana really struggles for horsepower, obviously. Um, so we wait for it to rain, and as soon as it rains, we're rubbing <laughs> our hands together, chucking wet what we call wets on. It's a you can they're only semi slick tyres um, anyway, or a, 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 an intermediate groove tyre. Um, so we the best memory I've got is you know cutting through a field and blowing a Mustang away down the back straight at, at Sandown, which you wouldn't do in the dry, but in the wet when you're in Tirana, it's um it's a it's a pretty cool experience and great group of guys to run with as well. Of course, everyone's passionate about old cars and stuff like that, which makes it easy. The you know the banter behind the scenes is really good. Um, people don't race for sheep stations, so these cars are getting more and more valuable. So that's important for protecting your investment to some extent. Accidents still happen, but you know, no one's a hero and, um, yeah, the environment around it's pretty good as well, but definitely, yeah, you know, leading a race at Sandown, um, would, would be it getting, starting on the front row at Phillip Island and, and looking over that crest is, is pretty amazing. Our objective was always to get to Bathurst. We haven't quite got there yet because that's a, uh, a fairly hefty exercise financially to, to get there with two cars. So, but that's still the objective. We'll, we'll, we'll get there one day, but I reckon that'll replace, uh, hopefully for the right reasons, uh, those couple of memories. So we can, um, I guess assume if we ever see anyone dodgy hanging around near the sprinkler systems, it's probably a Tirana owner. Oh, absolutely, mate. Yeah, most <laughs> definitely. Yeah, 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 definitely the case. So they um they actually outlawed the the tyres we were using a Dunlop wet that we could only get buy in from the UK, and they changed the rules because they thought it was unfair that in the wet we had grip. And we're sort of saying, yeah, but in the dry you've got horsepower. So you know, there's 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 quid pro quo to every car. But uh, yeah, definitely always uh, doing the rain dance. But luckily we're in Victoria most of the time. <laughs> It's going to rain at any stage down there. Tell me Sandown. You mentioned it a bit. What What's your memories of Sandown itself? Because I, I love that place. But then looking at it these days, it's a, it feels like a dated track now. Yeah, it is a little bit. And, and, and for me, the good thing is I've been to Calder. That's actually where I got my license. Jamie Winkup famously rejected me for my first uh, race license when he was a, a younger bloke. <laughs> Um, so that's my, uh, that's my Seriously? claim to fame. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he didn't know what he was talking about. This was back in the days when he was racing with Gary Rogers before he got good. Always but, hey, thought he knew nothing. That's always yeah, absolutely. That. No, he's a good bloke. And, and ended up get Lee Holdsworth actually ended up giving me my license. So that's why he's so good. But no, because Calder Park's such a, a tragic story, like Sandown looks like the Taj Mahal. So, um, but, you know, going there of late, yeah, it's it's pretty sad. And obviously they're trying to get rid of it and the council yeah. zonings, there's issues with that, which is good for races and 
bad for the people that apparently missed the fact that there was a racetrack near the house they were building. So, <laughs> you know, it's, um, yeah, it's one of those things. It'll be sad when it goes, it's going to go, but there's so much promise around, you know, that new track uh, set up that they're going to be hopefully building at Pakenham, which is not too far from Sandown, yeah. if you're not familiar with the geography of Victoria. And that's going to be a much better facility in terms of what it offers for karting and, and other aspects of, of um, motorsport as well. So we're pretty lucky in Victoria that we've got, you know, three full-time racetracks as it stands um, that aren't very far. Like Winton's three hours from Melbourne and it's a cruisy yeah. drive. Phillip Island's only an hour down the street. Um, and if we get one at Pakenham, it's halfway sort of between here and Phillip Island. I'm in, I'm in the southeastern suburbs as well. So we're pretty spoiled. But, yeah, it's pretty sad to see Sandown go the way that it goes. I still like going there to watch the 500 um, mm. when it's on. Um, so, but, you know, it'll go, unfortunately, I think. Yeah. Is there any chance you reckon? I know there's, there was a bit of a push in the forums to get it uh, iRacing to save it in the game. What, what odds do you give that? Well, Iron Park's there, and that's a blast. I never got to drive at Iron yeah. Park, and everyone I speak to says that it's like it was. Like they remember the graffiti on the walls is exactly as it was. Um, so if they can crystallise Sandown in that same way, and then offer, um, you know, the the non revised version of the track as well as they can do, that that'd be awesome to keep that um, together. You know, without that that sort of kink, um, that'd be great. I think they need to do it, whether or not they will. You know, how many people are going to download Sandown globally? I don't know. Um, you know, is there yeah. enough support locally for it? There probably is, but it's expensive to go out and scan. Um, it I know is, that- but if they're if they're heading out for other things, which I hear they possibly could be, like it's 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 a potential. Because has Sandown been in anything else? Like that they can't grab the data from. I don't think it has, has it? Like the old V8s never got went to Sandown in race driver or whatever it was, V8 Supercars 3. The so. R Factor had one. Um, so I wonder how rid- close they could just replicate that off the data because they've done that before. They've replicated data from other people and basically just bought the data. Yeah, so. they probably could. Like the R Factor one from memory because that was, you know, one of the first ones I got into when I got the sim um, in the Tirana that they had was actually pretty pretty accurate. Like you could drive that like you drive the track in the Tirana. Yeah. Um, so they could do that. The R Factor one was fine. I don't know if they brought it over to R Factor two because I'm I'm not into that yet. But um, yeah, they definitely could do that. And as you say, like I know I I've heard the same rumors or similar rumors that you know they're going to be heading out to Adelaide as soon as they can for mm. a, a, a track out there. And um, so if they're in the country, you know it, it amortizes the cost Makes for them sense. to get them all done, done while they're here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, if you're going to spend that money, you may as well get a fair chunk of stuff out of it. I assume obviously you got Gen three coming up, which since they supported the V8s with the, the, the recent change, they'd have to be looking at modelling for Gen 3 as well, but they can do that overseas, I guess, as well. So, um, yeah. And it'll be interesting get... to see how... Sorry, just quickly, it'll be interesting yeah. to see how they handle that given that they pre-released the NASCAR <laughs> mm, yeah. um, as well and got feedback on that beforehand. So, you know, they might be able to do the same thing with the V8 Supercar. Yeah, hopefully, if we um, if we high enough up the totem pole, I guess. Um, let's go. Let's go back... Let's let's go right back to the beginning. You you said you're into all these uh, racing games and where you started. What other games did you play when you when you're growing up? Well, give us some examples. Um, we we got an original Nintendo as a as an option from my parents, my sister and I. I got an older sister, and we were given the option of getting a Nintendo or going to the Sydney Easter Show because mum and dad figured that the Good money decision. was going to probably cost them about the same so we got the nintendo she still got it she still got it there so that was the first sort of gaming system we got into and, and racing games on that mate excite bike was just about where it where it finished on the uh, old original nintendo so there wasn't a lot to do on that we got a we had borrowed a super from uh, one of our mates played with that and then really the first racing game i got into other than accolade formula one on um on the pc uh, would have been Gran Turismo when I, when we got a, a PlayStation One. That was that was the first thing we got into. My favourite car was the Mitsubishi GTO because I could always beat Dad yeah. and when he was running the uh, Eastern Skyline. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, and you know that's that's where it all started. And then my mates and I heavily into Toka Toka Two. Like they're fantastic yeah. games. Um. Still still got it. Um. Want to try and get that back as well, but uh, haven't quite persuaded the old man to part with the uh, the PlayStation at this point in time. He's uh, he's still got that. So, um, but yeah, really there with with Toka, and then just graduating through the Gran Turismo, um, and and Need for Speed scene, um, the Dodge Viper back on computer, Need for Speed, Carmageddon as well in terms of car yes. games. Not really a car racing game, but still good no, fun. Still good fun. Don't worry about that. 
Um, um, yeah, see, that's where I, we sort of got to. I, 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 Cody's have just been bought by EA, and yep. they've just announced Grid Legends. I want them to go back and do a serious racing game, but they've also bought Project Cars developers as well. So that could be where Cody's end up going with back to a, a Toker but get Project Cars developers to do it, hopefully. No, maybe that... Because that, I really want that, like a, an actual series. I know Grid is a series one, but it's more street stuff and it's just more, you know, it's, it's I don't know, different. It's not Toker. It's not, not V8 Supercars or Race Rover or anything like that. It just doesn't feel the same. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's like a mixture, as you say, between sort of a need for speed... Um, yeah. style game and and a semi serious racing game and you sort of I don't know if there's a successful crossover yet between between the two that exists um I haven't, I haven't really seen it but yeah that, a taco game like that would be great yeah do it do it Cody absolutely don't just do it so let let's go you went into i racing then okay so you've gone from all these things and then all of a sudden what got you what what was the decision to, to, to bite the bullet and, and actually get into it back in two thousand and eight when you thought you had oh that was just eight years ago, sorry, when you thought you had time? I just stumbled, to be honest. I just found it and, you know, just decided that I was gonna download it and start doing it. And I'm I'm lucky my wife's pretty supportive of all the crazy stupid stuff I wanna get into. So <laughs> I said I'm buying a rig and blah 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 and next thing it all turns up and so oh, okay, fair enough, that's fine. So um and then yeah, I just downloaded it and fell into it. I didn't didn't research it beforehand. R Factor wasn't really doing what I needed it to do, so I just looked for something else, and it was the first one I stumbled across. And then saw the, the you know, the, the DLC that came, or that you could get access to as well. And I really wanted to get into a historic racer, but it, and it wasn't quite there with it, but it had enough to get me engaged, particularly with the GT stuff. Um, so yeah, just decided that was it, and then and then <laughs> spent six months because I didn't think about what I was doing and, and understand how the system worked, trying to work my way out of MX5, which I absolutely <laughs> freaking hate um, with a passion. And then, you know, yeah, mates came over and, you know, beers get, get drunk and stuff and you jump on and lose a, sh- a lot of safety rating and a heap of I rating at the same time. And so, yeah, just, just, uh, I fell into it really, to be honest, mate. It's, um, it wasn't a conscious decision to do it. Um, but as soon as I got back into it, I knew exactly where I wanted to go because of the, of the content that was available. So I'm curious, what did this first rig look like that you had to end up selling? Well, mate, it was, so I got, um, a, uh, uh, I always say it wrong. I call it Pagani, but Paganini yeah. or whatever the hell it is. I got yeah. one of those. Got one of those. It had a t- it had a TV on it, um, and uh, it had a, a, a G twenty five um, yep. with some pedals on it. And um, I, I had uh, one of the early day Dolby five point one surround sound creative speaker sets yeah. that I kept over the years. So I bolted a couple <laughs> of those to the back. You know, you bought it for Counter Strike back in the day. <laughs> folded a couple of those to the headrest of the uh, the seat and um and then yeah off she goes nothing about field of view set up nothing about that at all just jumped in turned on the computer and thought i'll be pretty good at this because i can drive a real race car so be <laughs> no problems here jumped on and was absolutely pathetic so um it was it was pretty um it was the thing is it was all bolted together i did cable management cable ties every you know centimeter and all that sort of stuff and the good news was someone broke into my house and tried to steal it and they actually couldn't get it out the door <laughs> because they couldn't pull it apart so it was sufficiently well put together that um it was a security item but yeah mate in, in comparison to what i've got now and what i've got now is pretty basic as well but in comparison to what i've got now it was uh, very very uh, entry level very modest it's funny that you say you thought you could just jump in and you know you could drive a real car as well so you thought you'd be okay because i thought the same thing and i don't race cars in real life i thought oh i've been okay at racing games and controllers before i've watched a lot of motorsport i'll be pretty good at this so then same thing it was a rude shock the first couple of races i did i very quickly realized i'm not as good as i thought i was <laughs> well the first time i played r factor um the guy that got me into sim racing said oh you need a steering wheel i'm like no nah, i don't need a steering wheel so i jumped on with a keyboard <laughs> And I'm just there trying to trying to crack a lap out in some sort of Le Mans car. I can't remember exactly what it was with the keyboard. Um, and uh, yeah, no, the, the linear steering is just, just not quite there for getting around there all that quickly. So that um, that didn't work out for me all that well. I um I first got my wheel. I had some mates that we had an online gaming group with, and he's a I found out in real life he's a high end cop. Like he's right up there. Um, got all these special driving licenses and stuff like that. And, and he was showing me how to race grid and I'm in my wheel. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm just can't keep up with him. This guy's smashing it out. I 
God, what, what wheel have you got? Yeah, no, no, I'm using mouse and keyboard. Oh, <laughs> what? It yeah, blew right. my mind. It devastated me. He, this kid, this guy was just that. He's, uh, I, yeah. Anyway, I guess that's what you're used to at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. He he understood the lines though, because obviously being a cop, he um, in in high pursuits, he had one of those licenses where he could go significantly faster than everyone yeah. else is allowed to do. So, yep, uh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's done his stuff. So, have you ever gone back to the MX5? Now you've been, now you're out of rookies. Um, funny enough, I actually did uh, about two weeks ago because I was uh, I was looking to get just some race time in before the twenty four the Spa twenty four hours. So I still just focus mainly on enduros now because that's all I've got time to prepare for. And I'm like, I need a race. So the MX fives were at Phillip Island a track that I know extremely well. So I'm like, I'll just jump in here. I'll be right. And um, it was actually pretty good. So the there was the usual carnage of, of people overdriving <laughs> and that sort of stuff. Um, so I just started at the rear of the grid, just wanted to get some time and, you know, end up finishing six or whatever. The result wasn't what was important, but it was actually pretty fun. So I can see why they've got such appeal, um, in the same way that, you know, the formula, formula V will now as well, um, on iRacing, cause you can just get in and have a crack. Um, so yeah. I, it's I, definitely I the great in. leveler, isn't it? It is. Can, yeah, anyone absolutely. can have a crack at it. Yeah, they've just uh, changed the it. gearbox in that car as well, isn't it? It's the sequential, or yep. it's the paddle shifters now. It doesn't use the hatch H pattern. Is that right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to give that a go because that was the that was the gearbox that was causing me all kinds of problems when I went to the skips and the skips was just so smooth and I'm like, I can't go back to the MX5. Now. Yeah, no. Nah. Used to love <laughs> racing them around. Yeah. Um. So did did you ever race at Phillip Island in real life? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, my favorite track, um, the Tirana is great there. Um, I've the Commodore, I haven't quite sorted out and haven't, I've, I've raced it five times in five years. So there's nowhere near enough, uh, seat time to get the car <laughs> sorted out. We're still, we're still dealing with bugs in that, but you know, it's, it's a blast because you don't get passed by people in a V8, but the Tirana is great fun right around there. You don't, you know, you just throw it around the track and it's a, a great little car. What's so yeah, good, good fun. There for the first time. Obviously, you're talking Sandown, you're talking Phillip Island, two of the probably the most, um, well, behind Bathurst, two of the most well known Australian tracks in in in, well, in Australia. What's it like going there for the first time? Somewhere like Phillip Island, distracting, um, because when you when you you know, I had no pre- preconceived idea about Phillip Island whatsoever, um, because I'd really only you know seen Bathurst um, as a track that I'd been around. And the first time you get out of pit lane, you you the, the open space around you is a little bit confronting. But then as you get down towards, you know, Southern Loop and that sort of stuff, it's it, it it's distracting because it's a nice view. Like you end up looking out the window. <laughs> um, and Lukey Heights is a bit scary because the first time you lock up into there or come up over there and there's someone out on the dirt trying to keep oh. themselves from piling into the wall or heading off into the grass down on the inside of the track. It, um, yeah, it can be confronting there, but there's nothing better than those last two corners. Um, just literally just hitting the throttle and, and being able to run it because they've, they changed the track a couple of years ago where between, um, on the last two corners, they actually ran a strip of concrete between the ripple strips to allow you to actually keep wide there. That wasn't there when I first started. So I had to make sure you didn't hit the dirt. Um, because if you hit the dirt, you're in a world of pain when you when you went around the final corner. So n- now that that's there, you can really drive the car right through that corner. Um, and you know, again, if you get it right on 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 iRacing, it's it's very very similar in feel to how it is when you go around there in real life. So um, I was lucky enough in in our stuff that I do with um, with Bridgestone that uh, I got a drive day there in in the BMWs as well. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> And and it there it's just it's it's the same in every car you go there. That if when you get that corner right and then you've got obviously you fly down into turn one, it's it's a really rewarding part of, of the track and you, you get a, you get the G you get the stomach G going through turn one as well if you get that right. So it's a really great place to race. Like it's it's a far and away a better race track than Sandown is. Yeah. Um, there's no question about it. But Sandown's tight and it's congested and it's it's full on all the time. You know, races at Phillip Island I've been in where you end up bored because you're in fifth and there's no one to race with, so you literally drive around the track and have a look to, have a look down and see if you can see Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we go from there back to iRacing racing for a moment. What's your favourite track and uh, car combo in iRacing? racing? I'm absolutely 
so I and and Chris Purnell told me that I, I did all this stuff back to front. I did the usual Australian thing, which is I'm only going to drive the V8 supercar and I'm only yep. going to drive the Holden, and that's it. That's all I'm doing on iRacing. And he's like, you pick the hardest car to drive yep. because it doesn't stop, it doesn't turn, it's got shit downforce. So I jumped into the RSR and I'm absolutely converted to to a Porsche person. Um, yeah. I love the GT3 that they brought out. That's what we raced at Spa. Yeah. Um, so absolutely Porsche is, is the car. I, we dabbled in the Lambo for a bit as well, but it's just not exciting. I think they've got the Lambo wrong. It's just not exciting to drive. Um, okay. it feels yeah. slow in a straight line. I think, um, as an auditory experience, it's nowhere near as exciting as, as listening mm-hmm. to the Porsche body fire up. But, um, so yeah, definitely the Porsche and, and the Nürburgring, um, to be boring, it wasn't my favorite, but once you finally get your head around driving a lap of the track, it's it's so rewarding to go there. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely the one for me that um, that I like. Spa's a favorite, of course, but um, but the the, the um, getting a lap right at the Nurburgring, I don't think there's anything better than that. Yeah, definitely. Braden spent a lot of a lot of time trying to get that right, didn't you, Braden? <laughs> Yeah, three or four nervous breakdowns in Discord chat with Nathan <laughs> as he's trying to teach me the track and because he'd been there and gone for a little track drive himself over at the Nürburgring. He's like, yeah, this is where the driving instructor told me to do this. And I'm, like, I'm not just not getting it. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. it's one of the tracks that does at least give you the restart just further back from where you've crashed because if it was oh, me trying to goodness. complete a lap there um, and do it clean and actually string a few together, we would have been there for about a month, I reckon. Yeah, so I got told that if you, if in real life you don't drive the track aggressively, you will crash, mm. and 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 that blows me away. That if you're not on the throttle at a certain mm, point, yeah. you'll end up crashing the car. Like that's just crazy. Yeah, it's um, I'm something that stuck with me. I think I was watching Top Gear once upon a time way back, and they had um Hammond go into one of the old Formula One cars, or it might have even been a re- relatively current Formula One car at the time, and basically he took it out for a drive, and the you know, mechanics and engineers and stuff were literally telling him you're driving it too slow. And that's why he kept spinning because you have to drive it fast to get the effects of the downforce to keep the car stable. And he he didn't have the, basically the confidence to do it. And that's why he kept spinning. And it's just something that stuck with me. Like it's crazy that you have to actually, to get the benefits of the car, you have to push it. Otherwise it's not going to work. And I guess, you know, Derbo ring in a sense is uh, similar that you need to use each of those little, you know, bits of, uh, uh, camber and everything to your yeah, advantage yeah. otherwise you know round you go <laughs> yeah yeah no it's an amazing place i haven't been there in real life i've been lucky enough to go to germany but um not i didn't get across to uh, to the ring um that's as close as i've been so we'll get there one day but um yeah haven't haven't uh, got got close enough yet to be there and, yeah, i went to silverstone um which is an amazing setup um in terms of the track itself and everything that's located there but yeah just didn't get didn't get across yeah, um, I was lucky enough. I went to when I went to Bathurst back in fourteen. I was a DJR member, so I got to have some time in the DJR garage for the barbecue that night. I think it was a Saturday night before the race. Um, and talking to Scotty Pye and David Wall at the time, uh, and David Wall in particular, obviously been there and driven it a lot, and he was telling us all these stories. And he's like, "Oh yeah, we were in the they're in a multi class race there, so you'd have him." They were doing the, the drive round. You'd have him in the front, someone navigating on the side, telling him where the t- turns were, and then two people in the back with the head out the back window, telling them when the big um, LMPs and, and all this were going to come fly <laughs> past because they're only in the GT3. So it was just basically he had to hold on and hope they're on the right side of the road for, for these guys not to basically flatten them on the way through. And then he's telling us about bike riders. He goes, you, you just see this break in the trees, and they go, that's where there's a bike rider just gone over the edge and never been found. And um, yeah, wow. yeah it's some full on stories out of it, but um, got to get over there one day, I, I reckon. Um, so you went in the spa 24 hour? We did, like, yeah, we did. Unfortunately, uh, it ended <laughs> like a lot of people's did, which is uh, the uh, we got halfway through. Um, oh, so we, no. we ran with a team of four. Um, I ran with um, Luke Traher and uh, Ed Foster, in fact, um, under our 981. Well, there's your motor- first problem. <laughs> motorsport. Well, it's it's funny you say that. Ed started, Ed qualified, Ed started, and um, he got taken out going um, uh, through on Rouge the first time. Um, the guy just jumped on the bumper and, and gave him two taps and pushed him off into the fence. So we ended up starting 50th effectively and, and um, 
another driver, Reese Ashmore and myself, we were going to do the night drive through the night um, and, and finish the race. So we were to take over basically halfway through. Went out a nap in the afternoon, all that sort of stuff. Came back and the boys were up in second, and they'd lapped wow. every they'd lapped everyone bar bar themselves and and obviously the leader. Um, we get to you know eleven and a half hours in. Of course, it's a guy in a gold Lamborghini um, who's, who's <laughs> been causing rooms. <laughs> absolutely been causing trouble all night um, and loses it up again up the top of En Rouge and and Ed had to avoid him and ended up plunging into the wall and um, yeah that was race over twenty minutes of repairs later and and ten laps down and there's not much else you can do so it's a it's a plague uh, within I racing it's one of the things that I absolutely uh, loathe about it is the probably the, the lack of training and lack of common sense with with people driving and, and, and even just the, the barrier for entry into those events. Like they fill four time slots with however many splits. I think they need to, to lift the area because if you can't drive the track basically, then you shouldn't be in the race. Like it's it's so frustrating to spend, you know, you guys have known six or eight weeks preparing for these things yeah. and your time and, and effort that goes into it and then to have it wrecked by someone that just can't drive the track. Not a racing incident. You just can't drive. Like yeah. it's um, very frustrating. I'm surprised they don't do some kind of pre-qualifying in the week leading up to it, like with all the practice sessions they put up, you know, set this time where you don't get in or, or, or we'll work on the splits that way um, yeah. just to try and get people away and everyone's got to put in a time. But, yeah, I don't know if, if there's any other way. There's, there's officials, like, obviously you do a 20-minute or half hour or even an hour an official and, and that happens and you only lose, you know, a couple of hours worth of prep and, and, and a race. But, yeah, the, the enduros are something different. They need to have something better in there. Um, I think that's we, why people, when they like just finish them, or, or even then that's a actually have a yeah. yeah have a successful time, it's just like it's like a unicorn. You know, just it's yeah. such a rare, rare thing for it to actually all go to plan, all go well, just from your own driving, let alone dodging anything else that comes at you from anyone, uh, any other yeah. people. So Bathurst twelve yeah. hour, we got done by a guy who was what twenty four laps down, and then we got done by him again when he was fifty laps down. Just like, yeah. come on. <laughs> Yeah, and that's where it's ridiculous. Like they, they, again, they shouldn't be in the race. It's, it's just yeah. the system. The system itself is broken because you, you don't learn racecraft and get yourself promoted. You, you learn how to circulate at the back of a field until you get into a licensed category that allows you to run a car you think you can drive. Yeah. And I understand they've got to sell content and they've got to keep people subscribed and all that sort of stuff. But there's got to be a balance that um, they just haven't quite struck yet. So, are you preparing for another endurance race at the moment, or do you do you run the VRS enduros? What how, how do you get your enduro, enduro fix at the moment? Um, basically, where I can. So we're planning on, and it's we're planning on running the Bathurst One Thousand just as the next thing in our calendar, uh, and Petit Le Mans, and that'll be it for yeah. our year. So, and I'm spoiled in the fact that that's the first um, the first enduro I haven't finished. So. The first, oh, okay. fir- first crack out of the box in at Spa last year, um, we finished seventh um, and finished. So we were, we were happy with that. Um, second at Petit Le Mans. So like, and we're in low split. So, you know, I don't post about it on Facebook and, and all that sort of stuff. But you're right in what you're saying as well, Bray, that people, you know, had, should celebrate finishing because yeah. it's, it's very hard to do and um, with all the stuff that gets in the way. But uh, yeah, so it'll be that. And, and just where I can, I, I literally keep my hand at it by running the 20-minute fix series or, or if I can yeah. get time to run a 40, I'll, I'll do that. But um, nothing where setups are involved or any of that sort of stuff because I just don't have time. Yeah, I just remember the sheer relief. Like when we've, we've only done the one enduro, we did the Bathurst 12-hour this year. And, you know, things we practiced, we started to feel like we were actually starting to get the track. Most of us were feeling pretty good. And then Pete Pete started and I think we we're all so nervous and he got there was an accident on the straight before the line and he slowed down to make sure he didn't get taken out and Pete, someone behind just did not slow and rammed him straight up the backside and we were just like we've been practicing for weeks and it's all over before we haven't even crossed the start finish line yet um yeah. so thankfully there was no damage so like it was from that point it was just like oh let's just finish and hope for the best yeah. and we we're on track for probably like a top 5 at one point before we um yeah got cleaned up into the uh into the chase um yeah by the lap car so it was just like yeah it was just it's it's a roller coaster of emotions just about and when you're doing it with other people it's like yeah it's it's you're very invested in it a lot more than you think you will be going into it i think that's that was the biggest surprise for me yeah, yeah. you're spot on spot on 
yeah, the, the the sheer relief where we did three hundred, we got that three hundred lap marker up too in the Bathurst twelve hour was was good, and then Bernie running out of fuel halfway up turn two, um, <laughs> on the three hundred and first lap was perfect timing. It was really good, but let's get into FGME cast. Yep. So you just fell into it, okay? I love this story. I love how how we we find out how people get into it. It's just completely random. Um, what went through your mind that first time you flicked on broadcast mode, and or how, did, how what we what was your setup for the first broadcast? Uh, I just basically had a, a mic I borrowed from work, um, and yeah, was learning SDK on the fly, so just turned <laughs> turned that on, turned on OBS, and to be fair, I was lucky I had one of the guys at work who was familiar with OBS, so he um he set that up for me and and worked with me to to get you know the basics done. Um, and then, yeah, just turned it on and off we went. So we started broadcasting some other stuff as well, just some retro gaming nights and, um, basketball card breaks and things like that, other stuff outside of sport, but, um, yeah, just flicked it on and, and off we went. We, we put together an endurance series, um, the Australian endurance E series, which was what we, we broadcast to start off with, um, which was, um, yeah, two hour single driver uh, races on a Thursday night, um, and yeah, just started running that. Tried to branch out into IndyCar and a whole heap of other bits and pieces, and then, to be brutally honest, ran out of time. Um, we we pulled the pin on the the AEE um, earlier this year because work. It was fine while we we're in lockdown, but you know people don't realize how much time goes into running series and, and, and running them properly while you're working full time with kids and everything else. So it just got too much. So I pulled the pin on it because there's enough series, there's enough out there now as well that, you know, one less series doesn't really make a, a lot of difference. Um, and then we just decided to focus on the broadcasting because it was something we could, we could set up and, um, and, and just do without having to, you know, worry about points and, adjudicating and, and all the other stuff that goes with running a series. So, um, yeah, just kept on with the broadcasting after that. So the setup at the start was pretty plain. I already had a good enough computer because we were running iRacing, but um, it was a good excuse to upgrade the PC as well. So <laughs> did that part way through and, yeah, got on with it. Yeah, we, we did enter a team in uh, the latest East, uh, Endurance Series, but we just never got around to it. And then by the time we, we were ready to go, it would already lock, uh, cut down. So, um Unfortunately, Chris Purnell is the only winner of that series. Is that where it is? At? Mate, that is uh, solely where it's at. Chris took out oh, both series, so um, he, he did uh, he very well because he, he did it in the uh, in the the Ford as well, which was the the tougher proposition. <laughs> no one wanted no to one drive out, that. No one else wanted to drive it, and he and still no uh, one wants he, to drive it. <laughs> he and Brett Douglas uh, rude their decision by the end of it. They were sick and tired of it, so they were happy to get out and, and move into something else. So you said you like talking, obviously got into commentary. Did you, were you surprised at how much you enjoyed it or how much you end up doing it in the end? Yeah, look, a little bit. I mean, I had to pull it back. It got to the stage where I was broadcasting seven days a week. And yeah, um, it's, it's, <laughs> as I said, I'm lucky. I, I don't say it just because, um, but I'm lucky my wife's really understanding with it all. We've got two young kids and yet I still am able to sit in the study, you know, four days a week and broadcast as, it's, as it is now. And then, whatever else goes on on the weekend. So it, it, I'm, I'm surprised how much I enjoy it, but a lot of the series that we cover are so well contested that it's, it's no different to watching, you know, real life racing that, that that's on TV, except I've got to tell people what's going on. So um, I enjoy the racing, which helps you get your boring races from here to there, but they're, they're seldom um, in the series that we cover. Um, Oz Pro Am is is an epic series that that keeps going from strength to strength, and you know you've got Shane in that, and you know some pro drivers and a heap of really really strong um, non non professional non real world race drivers contesting with him as well, which is fantastic to watch. And so yeah, I I, I really enjoy it. It's it's like my uh, switch off from work. Um, I get home, have tea, play with the kids, and then come in and and watch car racing for a couple of hours each night. No problems. I'm just trying to watch. Uh, I think Braden's watching the soccer at the moment. I just had it on <laughs> in the background. That was my bad. <laughs> we just hit the crossbar. <laughs> Terrible stuff. Oh. Um, um, what I was going to say was, um, as soon as you can, you got to get the kids trained up as commentators, and then you can sit back and watch the racing while they've got the commentary going. 
Yeah, well, they commentate on um, <laughs> Minecraft and Roblox yeah. and all that other stuff. They're quite happy to talk as well. So one day I'll, I'll get them into it, I'm sure. <laughs> My kid does not shut up when he's doing anything around the house because he watches YouTube videos all the time. He doesn't doesn't realize I'm in here doing it at night, but he's sitting there. I've got to tell him to shut up. He'll be pushing the cars around on the tiles like I used to do when I was young and he would commentate the whole thing. It's hilarious. I can't wait to get him into it. Um, so you've used SDK for a fair chunk of time now. How how good is that for broadcasting and how much have you seen that change over the time? The the support around it through their Discord is fantastic. Um, we've I've not really dug into it deep enough yet. Um, so the there's plenty more to do with it. We've just started revising the look and feel of, of our setup recently um, to push for some stuff we've got planned for next year. So there's a wealth of stuff you can do with it. Um, CSS, which is which is the customization for it, is not something that I've done since the first year of university. So really rusty. So trying to pick all that back up um, is time consuming. But there's plenty to do with it, and I find it a really once you get into it, it's a, it's a really reliable system to use for for broadcasting. So um, and as I said, the support the support behind it from from the guys that that build it um, is fantastic. Like Lee in the in their Discord, he's always available, and um, Pascal, the guy that put it together, is always around as well. So it's it's a really good system. I'm, and to be honest, I I say that with a little bit of a caveat because I've not in, I've not really looked into anything else. <laughs> um, we we found again same sort of thing. Like we found it, we found it was easy enough to use. Um, and and saw a number of people using it, so I just thought, well, that's the one that everyone uses. So we'll do the same thing, and and you know that was eighteen months ago. Yeah, I've done a bit of muck around in the background at the moment, and SDK. I, we we randomly chucked it on the other night when we had a, a V race that we were in a good chance of winning the team's championship with, and I just went, well, stuff it. I'm going to watch the race, so I may as well broadcast it from my angle and then yeah chucked it on and it just went up simple like it, you press buttons and it works and you know it, it looks professional straight out of the box so it's definitely I've, I've looked at others and this is just the, the most user friendly out there so definitely yeah. the way to go but um yeah. Braden, have you got did i cut you off then no well, i was just gonna say um paul stewart's definitely gonna have you in his D- dms when you're trying to go for your <laughs> next broadcast because we were it was definitely a work in progress Definitely a work in progress, but it was fun. It was fun. That's the main thing. You still enjoy it though, Stuart? Yeah, I do. Yeah, um, absolutely. Like um, I was just going to say, like SDK is a tinker tool. So if you like just tinkering mm. with stuff, it's it's the perfect place for you to be if you've got nothing else to do. Um, that's my but, problem. I don't have nothing else to do. Well, yeah, and I'm the same. That's why it's taken me so long to actually get somewhere. But if you do have nothing else to do, it's a great place to tinker away yeah. and, and just make little changes each week. And that's how we've gone about it now. It's like, cool, well, we'll, we don't like this bit of the screen, so we'll fix that and then we'll worry about the other stuff down the track and we'll just keep working on it. But um, but yeah, like, I still enjoy it, absolutely. It's, um, I'm not going to lie, getting to this end of the season, um, not that I compare myself to an AFL commentator or anything like that, but... <laughs> At all, but I, I remember hearing them saying when they get towards the tail end of the season and get into finals, they start getting tired, and, and I'm starting to get there now because it's been non-stop since since March, and because the series basically roll into one another, you know, now we're starting to get into this tail end of the year already because the, a lot of the series finish around November. I'm looking forward to them finishing as much as I'm enjoying it because I need a break, um, and that mm-hmm. three months over summer is um, is is where we get that on. And there's a lot of stuff going on outside of all of it as well, which is contributing to that. But um, it's um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the break. But we'll keep doing it for sure. There's um, you know there's plans to expand and do other things with it. So it's um, it's certainly going to continue to be part of our business. Are there any races or moments um, that you broadcast that really stick out? Um. Like we've had some moments like that have gone into the the i racing moments of the month thing, like the the top ten highlights. That was pretty cool early on when we were sort of looking at it, wondering whether or not what we were doing was good enough, um, and whether or not the racing was good enough. So um, that was pretty cool. Um, having having just the closest of the racing that we get and the quality of the racing that we get without contact and stuff like that is, is probably really, that's not down to us. That's, that's down to the series, but that's a highlight of, of, of the series that we broadcast. We have broadcast some series in the past where they've just not been great. 
racing wise um, and that's some of our series as well that we've developed so now that we've sort of gone through that process and got rhythm there's probably too many to mention like you know two weeks ago we had um at um where was it at I'm pretty sure it was at road atlanta in the oz pro-am two guys driving side by side through the slalom no paint traded nothing like that just pure full-on racing um, and, you know, jumping off afterwards into the Discord with the guys who were involved and they're just all pumped about it and you're pumped with them as well. Like, a, yeah, just the, the atmosphere and stuff like that. There's probably not one that I could pick out. Um, but yeah, every week we have something cool to talk about that, that's happened during one of the streams. So, um, yeah, I, I just no one stick out, but um, some, some really good stuff that's happened over the, over the last 18 months. How hard is it to commentate with Carl Withy? I love Carl. I don't know why he gets a lot of shit, but um, he's honest about who he is, and um, so not hard at all. I'm I'm really really lucky. Um, you know, I I started out I started out paying people to commentate, um, which was one of the things about the the whole situation in iRacing that really gave me the gave me the shits was was the fact that I felt like a lot of people were taking advantage of a lot of people and trying to make money out of it on the other side. So we set about doing it the right way, um, and. We, we we did that. Um, we don't do that now, but I try and help Carl out in other ways where I can um, because we are privately funded. So um, I enjoy having Carl on the stream massively. Scotty Rankin, he's a, he's a massive member of our team as well, even though at some stage I'm sure he'll blow up um, his microphone. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky to have those two guys help me out um, week in, week out. So um, I love it. Carl's a, Carl's a funny character. Some of his expressions are... Um, very, very English, um, mm -hmm. but uh, we we bear with that. Yeah, unfortunately, no. He's a he's a legend. You you obviously know he does a fair bit of work with us on the side. So he's he's just bubbly. He's um amazing to listen to, and yeah, just always happy. Is that I think ever unhappy. I think the good thing. Oh yeah, far out. Should even whinge before a broadcast. No, but um, <laughs> I think one of the other things as well about Carl is in in a, in an environment where there are a minority, but there are a lot of toxic idiots that jump in. There's also on the balance of that, there's that five percent of people like what you've just described who are are very much into it as a as a hobby and enjoy everything about it and are just good people to be around in them. So once you find them, it's really good to have them around all the time. Yeah, definitely. So explain to us we're getting near the end i've just realized um what series are you running at the moment on fgm um so we've got uh obviously ann's car is on Mon uh, mondays wednesdays and thursdays so um the the truck uh the uh, xfinity or thunder series on a wednesday and then uh the cup on thursdays um and then wednesday uh, tuesday nights is the uh, oz pro am sim series so uh, sam lehman and maddie carleone series there as well so we aren't we aren't producing any of our own series at all, um, and and yeah, just just uh, doing that with them. We're trying really hard to develop more content on the back end of of the races, um, as the sort of add on to what we're doing now uh, to to broaden the appeal. Because there's not a lot of people who are going to sit down unless they're invested in the series and watch you know a full race of just cars. There's if you look at the content that a lot of the the successful streamers doing, it's 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 more personalized stuff. So we're really trying to help those series grow and develop by putting that content out on the back end of, of a Monday night stream or a Tuesday night stream with some, either some stuff that we find funny and whether everyone else does or not, it's a different question and, or, you know, <laughs> just some different perspective stuff to see what works and see what people enjoy. So that's sort of where we're spending our time outside of um, not, not actually running a series anymore. Yeah, no, definitely value add, which is really cool. And look, I'd love to be able to sit down and watch a, a 15 minute or 10 minute condensed version of the trucks just so I can keep up with it because that's my problem. I just don't have an hour and a half to sit down and watch every single of one of those Anscar series at the moment because I love watching them. But yeah, I just don't have time. That's like yeah. six hours a week of my life gone just trying to cover that. So I'm just so thankful Carl does it for me now. Uh, yeah, even I do miss absolutely. out on, on the excitement and the action of it. Um, and, and yeah, like, there's, yeah, there's no one that does it. Like, the, once it, once the race is over, they do a few few, few chats with the a comment with the drivers, and then that's it. That's the end of the, the coverage for that series altogether. So even post shows or pre shows or stuff like that, it's all all stuff that I'd love to see out there. But yeah, just time, I guess. 
Um, yeah, and and we're working yeah. on some of that stuff, you know, as it's as it sits with with Anne's car. So there's some of that coming. We're just we're putting it together so that we get it not right the first time because we probably won't, but get it as close <laughs> to right the first time. And, and just as I said, just trialing those ideas to to start to try and broaden the content and exposure because um, the sport's got a long way to grow um, yep. locally and globally, but locally the sport's got a long way to grow. And you know, it's it's it was our ambition when we started eCast. Um, to stream 24 um, seven. Mm-hmm. And, and that was the goal. We sort of said, well, why, why are we going to do it? And we go, well, we'll stream 24 seven. That sounds like a good thing to do. Let's try and do that by the end of the year, <laughs> which was far too ambitious. So we started networking with people in the States and in Europe to, to broadcast on the channel and, and, you know, that sort of stuff. But so we sort of reset the goalposts and just sort of want to set about, you know, improving the professionalism of, of what goes on within yeah. the sport. Um, is is what we're trying to help do and, and and our contributions you know adding content to the scene so yeah watch watch this space mate there's plenty coming on uh, we'll definitely get you in for a chat before when when you want to announce anything don't worry about that um so i've just gone I, i've just gone blank i had about about five questions i wanted to ask you in this last couple of minutes but tell us What's your fate? What's your rig look like now? Because we didn't get looked at that before. We we heard what it started with, and you said you made it a little bit better, but it's not that better. What's your rig look like right now? So it's a Frankenstein. I've got um <laughs> I've got a GT Ultimate um aeroplane rig that I've cut yeah. and shut together. So it's got a a um a Thrustmaster wheel. I got um some advice and and bought a good set of pedals. I said don't worry about everything else, mm-hmm. just get good pedals. So. Um, I haven't got who sings or anything like that, which I'd love to get, but I'm not fast enough as, as it is. I've got some Fanatec V3s, which are great anyway. Um, and I've had them for, I've had them for well over a year and only just figured out how to set them up properly before Spa. <laughs> so, um, I'd set it up like my race car and then I found out that my race car was set up wrong. And so, but just continued on with my sim pedals the same way. Um, I've, I've run VR. Um, but VR is a bit of a hassle to get in and out of. So I, I had originally set up with, uh, with triple curved monitors, which have um, served different purposes. And, and, and I'm a, I'm a pre COVID, I'm a 36 inch waist post COVID. I'm not, and I've got a 30 inch waist seat. So it's, it's reasonably, um, non-compliant for, for long racing. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm squirreling away. Um, and I'm going to upgrade and, and get a new rig, but um, that's that's a little way away. So are you, are you building a, a, have you got a proper studio in the house now or, or where, where's, where's the broadcasting area looking for you? Or how's it yes, looking? so it's, um, it's a very much, so we're just about to finish building a house. So yep. at the moment, I'm in this massive co-share space with my two kids. At times, I've shared it with my mother-in-law as well during the long <laughs> lockdown. So it's a very versatile space. Yeah. Um, that's got uh, more monitors than people can fit in here and a sim rig and my LP player and a whole heap of junk. So it's really, really condensed. Yeah. Um, and, and at the office, which is where we will end up setting up because we've got commercial grade internet there and stuff like that. Oh, wow. um, it's, it's a much better, nicer surrounding where we can you know have a camera on, do a pre-show, do all that sort of stuff. Um, we've got a couple of decent um, computers there as well. So at the moment, mate, it, it's very, very... Uh, uh, howdy doody, um, that type of uh, setup, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get there, and it'll look like uh, probably not Channel Seven. We probably don't want to say that, but it will <laughs> upspec it eventually. It'll actually look professional, is what you're trying yeah, to say. Yeah, well, not, not like Channel Seven. No. no, that's why. That's why I said probably not Channel Seven, <laughs> but um, it'll 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 look the it'll look the part. Not that it looks everything. It's it's functional as it is now anyway. But I really want to try and have it in in one space so that I don't have to. You know, at the moment, to, to broadcast, I have to swing monitors around from things and kids can't play PlayStation and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So we'll, we'll separate it out. But, yeah, it's pretty pretty uh, agricultural at the moment. So give us a quick count. How many monitors you got in that room? Seven. <laughs> oh, pipped me. I've got five, but I definitely want a six and I could definitely use a seven. Yeah, I've got a, a Samsung wide for video editing and all that, which is, which is my main monitor and then the, the triples for the... For the sim rig and then the ones for the kids as well. So, you can so, never have too many monitors. No, but that's you can't. it. I'm still probably short one or two. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I use my tablet. It's, I've got a thing that sits on the side of my rig so I can just see my Facebook chat. That's that's my latest thing. I've got that attached. I have my mobile phone hooked up so I can do other stuff. And then, so 
technically screens. I'm up about seven, but yeah, it monitors itself five for now yeah. until yeah. I build this new house. I'm in the process of building as well, and I'm doing an actual room, bedroom, bedroom that will be a studio as well. So hopefully. Well, I tried to convince my wife that the theatre room at our new house, which is <laughs> never going to be a theatre room because I don't understand the concept of not watching TV on the best TV in the house all the time. Yeah. So I'm like, well, it's not going to be a theatre room. So, you know, it, it really should be the study. It yeah. should be the study and I'll set that up, but that didn't fly. So it's going to be a no. gym and, and, and I've got I've got the study that's designed to be the study, but um, it's bigger than what I'm in now. So it'll be good. It'll be nice. So what's it like... Um broadcasting to a community like do you get much feedback from f from the fgm ecast like patrons at all i don't i don't actually which i'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing when we were series administrators i got tons of feedback yeah um yeah <laughs> lots of it um but now that we don't do that no i don't tend to get a lot i mean we we we're really focusing on growing YouTube. Um, yep. And so we spend a lot of attention and time there because I think it's probably the best platform long-term for us to be on for the type of content that we're doing. Um, we just get the people who, you know, like it, like the stream, like the thing, the usual tune in regulars, like, you know, Josh Micklemore's dad always tunes into the feed, which is great. <laughs> um, so we've got our regular, regular viewers, which is awesome. And then just, you know, your, your periodic viewers. So we, we don't get a lot of feedback. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but, um, you know, feedback's so do you only one find that difficult or not? No, not at all. Cause feedback's okay. only one person's perspective. I don't really care. Yeah. It's brutally honest. Like there'll be, there'll always be someone who hates what you do, but there'll always be someone who likes it. You guys yeah. would get that surely with what you do. Yeah, well, it's weird. Hey, I've, yeah, I've everyone thought... likes it. Everyone likes it. That's it. <laughs> but that's fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying though. You'll 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 get it. Like you'll you'll get feedback from everyone. You know, and it'll always vary. It's weird though. Like I've podcast for about six or seven years now. I had some successful ones over the time, and never got much feedback at all. But this one, for some reason, everyone's having everyone gives us feedback. Everyone's jumping in the Discord. It's really good. Like it's re like it's all been positive so far. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, it's strange. It's the iRacing community is a fickle little bunch. Uh, they, they like stuff and they hate stuff, but they apparently like us at the moment. So well, well and your, we your discord such a good community. And I think that's probably why you get that feedback, um, because you've got a community built around it, which really, you know, is, is the best way to do what you're doing is to have that strong community, have, have people within the community that are, are keen to engage good, bad, or indifferent in terms of their feedback, not in terms of their behavior. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why I think you're probably getting it. So you're doing something where there was a huge gap and you're doing it well. So, you know, I don't know if we're um, doing it well, but we're doing it. That's all that matters. <laughs> well, mate, there's people that listen, so you must be doing something right. Well, that's it. I, I'm I'm a sucker for analytics. I just sit there and watch numbers all day, and then I get yep. cranky and, and stop looking at them. Do you, have, were you doing that at the start? Obviously, still do. you were. Still do. St still do. Yeah, absolutely. The numbers with with what we do with the media company and stuff like that. It's all about the numbers. I I've got I've got the tube buddy and the IQ yep. the the um the vid IQ up on the top of the YouTube stream, and I'm always looking at it. And like when one of them drops off, I get angry and I tick it back on again. I'm like, oh, why the hell did that drop off? Why hasn't this gone up quick enough? And then start playing around with hashtags and all the usual stuff that you can spend years of your yeah. life worrying about. So yeah, no, very much the same. I like it, but um, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's not. The I'm for the factor, first time like... since I've been back lately, Twitch for the first time, I'm just I don't look at numbers anymore. I just I don't have it anywhere on my screens. And I get so bad that I get, I had Hobo raid me the other night. I had like 34 viewers or something, 40 something viewers watching me. And I didn't even realize. I'm like, why is there so many people in chat? And someone's like, you just got raided by Hobo. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> there you go. We, we, we even, we've been toying with and we'll probably end up doing it at moving away from Twitch completely. Yeah. Um, because it's just not, it's not the place for what we do. Yeah. No one, we're, we're lucky to, and again, looking at the numbers side of it, but we're, we're lucky to get, you know, five concurrent viewers during a stream. And, and I don't care, but if when if there's no point, if no one's watching, there's no point being there because you can't do HD on, um, that you can't do 4K on Twitch anyway. Mm -hmm. So it restricts our capacity on the, the, the streams that we're more popular on. Like YouTube we, is our highest live viewing platform and, and Facebook of late because Facebook have changed the way they're presenting gaming. So we're all getting a, a nice little kick along, but um for me twitch is almost a waste of time i know I, other people will have success on it but as a broadcaster it's a waste of time i think yeah i i must admit i think it's one thing that's common with every everyone i've talked to about fgme cast and especially Anscar is the quality of the 
the pictures or the, the video feed that you're putting out is phenomenal. The cars look just amazing on those on the on the tracks the way you've got it at the moment, however you're doing it. So well, well, I appreciate that because I'm always watching it thinking, far out, that looks terrible. <laughs> Why is it not in friggin' 4K? What's going on here? And, and so I appreciate that. We had someone I'm... jump in the other day and say it looked terrible and Hobbo fortunately uh, <laughs> jumped to our rescue and said, no, nah, mate, it, it looks fine over here. I've, I think I've watched a broadcast before where someone's coming in and gone, why is it so stuttery? Why is it so this? And, and and I think it was you who started panicking. And then someone's hopped in chat and gone, nah, it's right at my end. And someone else has gone, nah, it's right at my end. It must be your end. Reboot it. Yeah. And you go, oh, yeah, yeah. reboot it. It's fine now. Don't worry. Don't worry. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's the one I know the stress about. in your face would have been like, oh, my God. <laughs> So, yeah, well, and as I said, once we finally get, get into streaming out of the office, when we've got the reliable connection there, we'll, we'll be we'll be in 4K permanently, and that's when I think we'll probably make the jump away from Twitch. Yeah, definitely. Like, whatever works for each other. Like, I'm finding Facebook for some reason works right now. I don't know what it is, but um, it's just so hard to get chat from Facebook when you when you don't have enough monitors. That's my problem. They've they changed... Don't they've changed the algorithm on Facebook for gaming content. So you would have noticed probably two or three weeks ago, it um, started going bananas mm-hmm. and we, I, I, you know, you get the, re- the report after your stream and what have you. And there's like 56 people. What, what's going on here? And then, you know, you have a look at the fee, the, the, the viewer numbers and it's, it's reach has blown out to like 55,000 and you haven't changed anything. So I think it's just because they're trying to promote, gaming content yeah. on facebook to try and get more people into it and i haven't seen it. those numbers yet but i did i shared the thing with Braden. i said this is what we usually get for a post and then i said this is what we just got for one of our streams and it like dwarfed it by like a factor of a thousand yeah. it was ridiculous but yeah haven't been able to reach out again well i think yeah and especially our 24 hour stream actually no tw- our 12 hour stream the enduro seemed to go really well i don't know what that was but um, duration yeah i'd say so but mm. yeah, I've got to, we got to, we're planning on Petit Le Mans, aren't we, Braden? Yeah, we're going to put a couple of cars in that. I think that'll be our yeah, next one. If I could drive time. a V8, we'd do the one thousand, but I can't drive a V8, so it's just time. I don't have time. That's <laughs> it. Well, so there, therefore you can't do it, mate. It's <laughs> just it. time in the car. We we Once when this... we when we got when we got knocked out, um, Reese and I because we didn't get to drive. I'm like, mate, you know what? Bathurst is up next. Let's jump into V8. And I went I went up. Um, went up mountain straight uh, and just piled straight into the wall because I forgot you had to <laughs> flip the throttle to downshift because I just got out of the Porsche. So there's plenty of time to practice, but I'm going to need it. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, we should start wrapping this up. I know Braden set up a uh, practice session for Catalonia uh, that's going to start mm. any moment. So I uh, better let him go. But thank you so much, Stuart. Where can people find your content and what's coming up with your content over the next couple of days? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously we're FGME cast. We're across all of uh, the major streaming platforms, despite what you've just heard, um, <laughs> Facebook and YouTube. We'd love people to give us a, a punch on YouTube. We're, we're massively trying to accelerate towards the thousand like everyone else is on that yeah. platform, thousand subscribers. So um, appreciate any help anyone can give us there. Um, and if you're interested in, in um, learning more about our business, um, you can seek me out on LinkedIn, um, just Stuart Brown on LinkedIn and have a, have a look there. Uh, we will soon be rebranding as ferguson.gg um, over the coming months. Um, yep. So uh, look out for that. That's uh, one of the changes that are coming, but uh, we've, got, we've got plenty in the works. So uh, I'll let you guys in on it when we get there. Sweet. That'll be awesome. That was thank you question. very much for having me, of course, as well. Yeah, no problems, mate. Anytime. Like I said, I think we could have gone on for another couple of hours, as I say to all the guests, but this was actually true as well. Um, so quickly, the question I was going to ask you before, where are we at with the cup at the moment in Anne's car? How close are we to the to the um, chase? We're a few weeks out from the chase. Um, yep. So Carl is the one that I rely on for all of that information. <laughs> I literally sit back and just dump him in the poo and let him paddle his way out of it. But we're a few weeks out from the chase. So the drivers are just starting to get focused on making sure they get in. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I think we've two or three rounds before we get into get into the chase. So not, not too far at all. A uh, couple of weeks out from um, the trucks returning and for season two of the um, the Xfinity cars in the Thunder series as well. So, um, but yeah, the chase is uh, imminent. And they all kick off at eight o'clock? Yes, mate. 7, 7.45 we, we, we do and then the race generally starts at eight. Okay. I'm looking for something that starts a little bit later on a Wednesday, but I'll talk about that later. It's all good. Uh, so thank you so much, Stuart. Braden, quickly, where can people find you, mate? Yeah, uh, I'll be over at some point on... Uh, streaming on Twitch, I was been doing, had been doing the road to 3K, but I actually made it off stream, so that was great. Uh, it was a nice 
Nice little um, bonus before this week's... Uh... You could always drop some SR and then go back above it on stream. Yeah, true. I could do. Maybe I'll just do a little <laughs> fake rate. I probably won't even have to fake it. It'll probably just happen, to be honest. It'll be road to 3K again very soon. But uh, yeah, so you can find me at twitch.tv slash the one and I don't know, by the time this goes up, the Olympics will probably be over. So I won't be tweeting the Olympics, but... Uh, if you want to hear me talking about anything else, I'll sad be, things uh, about Port Adelaide, yeah, yeah, Just, whinging about football or some other sport, most likely you can <laughs> uh, hit me up on Twitter at Braden Talks. Okay, and uh, get us all at Locked On Lads on Facebook, Locked On Lads YT on YouTube. As Stuart said before, we're trying to go to a thousand. We're way off, but <laughs> get us there, people. Go give us a subscribe on that. That'd be awesome. Uh, all the podcasts do go up there um, at the same time on the podcast feed, so you can catch the static uh, background with the audio over there as well if you want to. Uh, but Locked On Lads on Twitch, we are Wednesday, Thursday nights at the moment. Uh, hopefully when things clear up on my end, we might even go a few more nights a week or a few days as well. Uh, other than that, lockedonlads.com slash Discord, as Stuart mentioned before, jump in there. It's a really good community. We're doing having some really good fun. Uh, and, yeah, definitely check that out uh, if you can. Otherwise, Locked On Lads Twitter, Wilco Chill Zone on Twitter, but that's the main thing. Once again, Stuart, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and we'll definitely chat to you again soon on the main podcast. Um, we will catch you, yes, yeah, soon. But, yeah, definitely go over and check out FGM Cast. Have a good night all. See you later.